As a long-time fan of the Assassin's Creed series, I've played through all the mainline games and have explored countless different settings. The franchise has been captivating many of players worldwide with its rich and immersive historical settings. From the bustling streets of Renaissance Italy to the ancient sands of Egypt, the world design of this franchise has been nothing short of stunning. It's no wonder that fans like you and me have fallen head over heels in love with the series. In fact, the world design is so integral to the series that it's difficult to imagine Assassin's Creed without it. As a devoted fan, I can attest that the world design is the heart and soul of the series. Without it, Assassin's Creed would just be a bunch of hooded figures running around stabbing people. And while that may be entertaining for some, it's the beautifully crafted worlds and historical settings that just keep us coming back for more. That's why in this video I will be ranking my top 12 favourite settings from each of the mainline Assassin's Creed games. This was not an easy task, as each game offers its own unforgettable locations and environments. But after much deliberation and contemplation, I've narrowed it down to the 12 that stood out to me the most. Some of the settings on this list may be expected, while others may be surprising. With that being said, if you happen to enjoy this video, be sure to support me by just simply clicking that subscribe button. So. Why did I rank Assassin's Creed Rogue as number 12 on my list of settings in the series? Well to be frank, the North Atlantic during the Seven Years War doesn't exactly exude excitement and adventure for me. Although it's a historical setting, it doesn't quite measure up to the other settings that I consider the best in the series. Especially my two top choices. Playing as a former assassin who has turned Templar can be fascinating, but the overall setting failed to captivate me as much as the others. I don't have a burning desire to revisit icebergs and stormy seas anytime soon. Additionally, the gameplay mechanics in Assassin's Creed Rogue were not groundbreaking. It felt way too similar to previous games, which made the setting feel a bit stale. Another reason why Assassin's Creed Rogue was this low on my list is that it lacked the same level of cultural and historical depth as some of the other games in the series. I do enjoy naval battles, but when compared to exploring ancient civilizations or famous historical events, the setting of Assassin's Creed Rogue just doesn't feel as memorable or unique. However, this is just my opinion, and perhaps you relish sailing through icy waters and hunting assassins as a turncoat templar, and that's perfectly fine. When it comes to settings, we all have our preferences, and for me, Assassin's Creed Rogue is at the bottom of my list. When it comes to the first Assassin's Creed game, I have to admit that the setting set during the Third Crusade in the Holy Land does have its ups and downs. On one hand, I appreciate the level of detail and historical accuracy that Ubisoft Montreal has put into designing the game's world. The architecture, clothing and customs of the people during the late 12th century are all incredibly well researched and create an immersive and realistic environment for us. However, as much as I enjoy exploring the three major cities in the game, which are Jerusalem, Acre and Damascus, I have to admit that I sometimes find the setting a bit lacking. While each city is intricately designed, they can start to feel a bit repetitive after a while. Additionally, some parts of the game's settings, such as the portrayal of Muslim characters as villains, have drawn a lot of criticism for perpetuating negative stereotypes. While the original Assassin's Creed game was undoubtedly groundbreaking in many respects, one major aspect of the game that's been widely criticised is the horse ride journeys between each city. It's very noticeable that these journeys do feel lacklustre and empty, failing to offer a sense of adventure and excitement that one might expect from a game that's set in the Middle Ages. Part of the problem lies in the fact that the journeys between cities were often quite lengthy and lacked any real variety or interest along the way. We would simply ride our horse along the same monotonous path, encountering very little in the way of challenges or diversions. This made the journeys feel like a tedious chore rather than an exciting part of the gameplay experience. The game's setting also plays a very crucial role in the story. The game's plot revolves around the conflict between the Assassins and Templars, 
two secret organizations fighting for control of the world. The Holy Land serves as a backdrop for this conflict, as the Assassins and Templars battle for influence over the people and politics of the region. Whilst I did enjoy some of the historical accuracy and immersive nature of Assassin's Creed 1's setting, I must admit that there are a few aspects of it that haven't aged well. The game was released in 2007, and compared to more recent entries in the series such as Valhalla and Odyssey, the graphics and visuals are definitely outdated. The buildings lack the level of detail and texture that we have come to expect from the modern games, which can be a bit jarring at times. However, I also acknowledge that the limitations of the hardware at that time definitely played a role in this, so I can't exactly knock it that harshly. Now, this one may be a surprise to some people, but for me, I totally understand why I decided to put Assassin's Creed Revelations at number 10. For me, the highlight of Revelations setting is the city of Constantinople, or as we now know in today's modern age, Istanbul. The vibrant colours and intricate architecture make me feel like I was exploring a living and breathing city. Plus, there's something satisfying about scaling the towering dome-shaped mosques and iconic landmarks that are unique to Istanbul's skyline. And we can't forget about the Ottoman Empire, which adds an interesting layer of historical context to the game's setting. I mean, who doesn't love Janissaries and other figures of authority? Okay, maybe just me. Assassin's Creed Revelations does a decent job of immersing me in the world of the Ottomans, with the various factions and guilds competing for power and influence. It's like a Game of Thrones, but with fewer dragons and more coffee houses. While I did enjoy exploring the vibrant and bustling city of Constantinople in Assassin's Creed Revelations, I do have to admit that some of the districts were a bit lacklustre compared to other Assassin's Creed games. For example, the Galata district felt like it was more of an afterthought than a fully fleshed out area. It's a shame as the district does have a lot of potential. It's located across the Golden Horn from the main city and is home to a large Genoese colony. However, despite this interesting historical context, the district feels like it was worked on last minute. There are a few interesting areas to explore, but overall the district feels like it was given a little less attention than it deserved. Similarly, the Cappadocia district also felt like it was rushed and unfinished. While it was an interesting change of pace from the main city with its underground tunnels and hidden chambers, it didn't feel like it was fully realised. The district lacked the intricate level design and attention to detail that made exploring Constantinople such a joy. However, I do have to admit that some of the other locations in the game feel a bit lacklustre too. I mean, I don't think I could tell you anything about Cappadocia or Masia if my life depended on it. And also, the game's graphics are starting to look a little outdated, which makes some of the buildings look less detailed than they could be. But hey, it was released in 2011, so I guess we can cut it some slack. Overall, while Revelations may not be the strongest entry in the series, it still holds up pretty well in terms of setting. It's a fascinating look at one of history's most influential empires, and the city of Istanbul is a memorable and exciting place to explore. And hey, any game that lets me play dress up with Ezio is a win in my book. Assassin's Creed 3's setting is one of the most unique and interesting ones in the series. Set in colonial America during the tumultuous years leading up to the American Revolution, Assassin's Creed 3 puts us in the shoes of Connor, a half English, half native American assassin who is caught up in the struggle between the American colonists and the British Empire. One of the things that I did like about Assassin's Creed 3's setting is the sheer scope and scale of it. From the crowded streets of Boston to the dense forests of upstate New York, the game's world is vast and varied, offering a seemingly endless array of locations to explore and secrets to uncover. Whether you're climbing the towering buildings of New York City, stalking deer through the woods, or navigating the treacherous waters of the Atlantic Ocean, there was always something new and exciting to discover. Another aspect of the setting that I appreciate is how it immerses us in the complex and often conflicting politics of the time. Assassin's Creed 3 does a great job of portraying the tension between the American colonists and the British Empire, as well as complicated relationships between different Native American tribes and European settlers. Playing as Connor, we must navigate this complex web of alliances and rivalries, working to protect their people and achieve their goals while also remaining true to their creed as an assassin. 
Now don't get me wrong, Assassin's Creed 3 setting is not without its flaws. Some of the more rural areas can feel a bit empty and the game's portrayal of certain historical events and figures has been criticised of being overly simplistic or even inaccurate. Overall though, I think that Assassin's Creed 3 setting is a strong and memorable entry in the franchise. Its portrayal of colonial America is quite unique and engaging. And the game's focus on the complex politics and alliances definitely adds an extra layer of depth to the experience. Now, let me explain myself. You're probably thinking Assassin's Creed 2 at number 8? He's crazy. Well, you have to remember that this is a ranking that's based on setting and not overall game. If this video was about which Assassin's Creed game is the best, this would definitely be in the top 3. Anyway, with that being said, Assassin's Creed 2 still holds a special place in my heart and I can confidently say that Assassin's Creed 2's setting is one of the more impressive and engaging ones in the series. When compared to the holy lands of Assassin's Creed 1, Assassin's Creed 2's Venice and Florence combo smokes the competition out of the water. Renaissance Italy is such a vibrant and fascinating time period to explore and the regions feel diversified and worth exploring. The game's depiction of Venice is a standout for me. The intricate canals and narrow streets are rendered with incredible detail, and the lively crowds and vibrant colours transport us into the heart of a bustling metropolis. This is a significant departure from the relatively sparse environments of the first game's holy lands, making the change of scenery all the more refreshing. Another aspect of Assassin's Creed 2's setting that I deeply appreciate is the game's ability to balance historical accuracy with engaging gameplay. The cities are packed with landmarks and monuments that have been recreated with remarkable faithfulness, and the storyline features prominent historical figures such as Leonardo da Vinci and Niccolo Machiavelli. Nonetheless, the game does not become bogged down in historical details, and it still manages to offer a thrilling and immersive action-adventure experience. That being said, I do acknowledge that some fans of the Assassin's Creed franchise have raised concerns that the game setting has not aged well, largely due to the software limitations of its time, just like in Assassin's Creed 1 and Revelations. While the cities of Florence and Venice remain impressive to explore, they may feel somewhat static and lifeless compared to the more dynamic and interactive environments of more recent Assassin's Creed titles. The game's handling of certain historical events and characters have also been criticised for being a bit too simplistic and even inaccurate. This is a common criticism of the Assassin's Creed series as a whole, and it is certainly a valid one. While the games do make a commendable effort to bring history to life in an interactive way, they cannot always provide a completely reliable portrayal of historical events. Overall, I firmly believe that the setting of Assassin's Creed 2 is a powerful one, especially the depiction of Renaissance Italy. It's breathtaking in its attention to detail and its vibrant portrayal of a historical time period. And just like I previously mentioned, the software limitations may have hindered the game's world from feeling as dynamic as more recent entries in the series. Nevertheless though, the setting is still a testament to the franchise's commitment to bringing history to life. Assassin's Creed 2 and Brotherhood are two of the most beloved entries in the series. They both feature stunning depictions of historical locations. And while Assassin's Creed 2's setting is often praised for its technical achievements, Brotherhood's depiction of Renaissance Rome is completely different and it's one that holds a special place in my heart. Objectively speaking, Assassin's Creed 2 saying is impressive, the game's depiction of Italy is great and all, but despite these impressive achievements, there's just something about Brotherhood's setting that resonates with me on a more emotional level. Perhaps it's the sense of nostalgia that comes with exploring a familiar location. Rome is a city that has captured the imaginations of countless people over the centuries, and getting to explore it in a video game is like a dream come true. The game's depiction of Rome is just like Assassin's Creed 2's depiction of Venice and Florence. Both are breathtaking in their attention to detail. 
From the Colosseum to the Pantheon, every landmark is beautifully recreated and the city's crowded streets and markets feel alive with activity. There is a sense of grandeur and majesty to Rome that makes it feel like a truly epic setting for an action-adventure game. Of course, Assassin's Creed Brotherhood's setting isn't without its flaws and just like Assassin's Creed 2, the game's depiction of historical events and figures have often also been criticised for being too simplified or even inaccurate. And while the game's depiction of Rome is impressive, it's also worth noting that the city is not as varied or diverse as the cities of Assassin's Creed 2. Still, these flaws do little to detract the overall experience of exploring Renaissance Rome. In the end, whether you prefer Assassin's Creed 2 or Brotherhood setting likely comes down to personal preference. Some of us may prefer the technical achievements of Assassin's Creed 2, while others may find a more emotional resonance in Brotherhood's depiction of Rome. But regardless of which game you prefer, it is hard to deny the impact that both of these games have had on the series. With their stunning depictions of historic locations and engaging gameplay, they are true testaments to the franchise's commitment to bringing history to life in an interactive way. Assassin's Creed Valhalla is the latest and newest installment of the franchise, and for me it's at number 6, which is pretty bang in the middle. I actually made a video on this game quite recently and talked about how this game had potential but failed to live up to it. A large factor was due to the setting and how Ubisoft portrayed England during the Viking era. The game's open world is the largest in the franchise's history and many players have been eager to explore every inch of it and me being a fan of Assassin's Creed I was also eager to dive into Valhalla's England and see what the game had to offer. In terms of sheer size, Valhalla's England is undoubtedly the most ambitious open world in the series to date. As you journey through the game's various regions, you'll encounter all sorts of NPCs, enemies and wildlife. The game's world is so large that it can take hours to traverse from one end of the map to the other. However, as impressive as Valhalla's open world size may be, it's not without its flaws. The game's size is actually one of its biggest downfalls. With so much territory to cover, it's easy to get overwhelmed and lost in the world. It's also easy to fall into a rut when it comes to the game's activities and quests. Many of these feel repetitive and samey with little variation between them. Perhaps the biggest disappointment of Valhalla's setting though is how it handles its historical setting. As a fan of history and historical accuracy, I was pretty disappointed to find that Valhalla takes a lot of liberties with its depiction of Viking era England. While the game's world is undeniably impressive in terms of its attention to detail and graphic fidelity, it often feels like a generic fantasy inspired version of the past rather than a faithful recreation of history. Despite the franchise's history of utilising past events and personalities to create compelling and intricate plotlines, Valhalla fails to deliver in this regard, which is especially disheartening. Although the game does feature intriguing characters and story elements, its use of history as a backdrop for the narrative falls below expectations. That being said, there are still some things to appreciate about Valhalla's setting. I was blown away by the level of detail and beauty in the game's depiction of Norway, from the snow-capped mountains to the picturesque snowy cliffs. Every aspect of the Norwegian landscape feels lovingly rendered and painstakingly researched. Assassin's Creed Unity is set in Paris during the French Revolution and the game's depiction of the city is simply stunning. From the iconic landmarks such as the Notre Dame and even the Eiffel Tower during the World War II level, to the small details like the cobblestone streets and the bustling crowds. Unity's Paris truly feels like a living, breathing city. The level of detail in the game's graphics is truly impressive and it's clear that a lot of time and effort were into recreating the city with as much historical accuracy as possible. One of the things that I love the most about Unity's setting is the way that the city changes as the game progresses. At the beginning of the game, Paris is still relatively calm and peaceful, but as the revolution intensifies, so too do the battles in the streets. Buildings are destroyed, barricades are erected, and the city becomes a true battleground. It's a good example of how a setting of a game can be used to tell a compelling story and immerse us in that world. Another aspect of Unity's setting that I appreciate is the way the game incorporates historical figures and events into the story. 
from Robespierre to Napoleon. The game's story is filled with characters and events that are grounded in real history. Of course, the game does take some liberties with the historical facts in order to fit them into the narrative, but overall, the way that Unity weaves together history and fiction is very well done. One of the most memorable parts of Unity's setting for me was the game's use of parkour. The city of Paris is the perfect playground for the game's free-running mechanics, and the ability to scale buildings, jump across rooftops and zipline across the city is incredibly satisfying. The game setting truly feels like an extension of the player's abilities, and it's hard not to feel like a true assassin as you traverse the city's rooftops. Although I hold Assassin's Creed Unity setting in high regard, there is one aspect that stands out to me as a bit of a drawback, and that is the crowds. As someone who enjoys exploring the game's world and immersing myself in its historical setting, I did find the crowds in Unity to be somewhat of a nuisance. Don't get me wrong, the crowds in Unity are impressive in their size and scope. The game's depiction of Paris during the French Revolution is filled with NPCs, each with their own unique animations and behaviours, but at times the crowds can be overwhelming and make it difficult to navigate the streets. One of the biggest issues that I had with the crowds in Unity is that they often get in the way of my movement. Trying to navigate through a crowded market or a busy street can be a frustrating experience, as NPCs don't always move out of your way quickly enough. This can lead to situations where I would get stuck in a crowd and have to wait for the NPCs to disperse before I can continue on my way. I have to say that Assassin's Creed Syndicate's setting is one of my all-time favourites. The game takes place in a Victorian era London, and the developers did an incredible job of bringing this iconic city to life. In fact, the detail of this city is by far the most polished and well thought out. From the moment that you step foot into the game's rendition of London, you're immediately struck by the attention to detail that went into creating this world. The architecture, the clothing, the vehicles, everything feels authentic to the time period. I particularly love the way that the game captures industrial revolution, with factories belching smoke and steam engines powering through city streets. One of the things that really sets Syndicate apart from the other Assassin's Creed games is the sheer variety of environments that you get to explore. You can climb to the top of the Big Ben and take in the breathtaking views of the city, or navigate through the maze-like streets of Whitechapel. The game's developers clearly put a lot of thought into the layout and design of each area, making sure that they are all felt unique and worth exploring. Another aspect of Syndicate's setting that I really appreciate is the way that the game seemingly blends real historical figures and events with its fictional narrative. Throughout the game, we'll interact with characters such as Charles Darwin and Queen Victoria, and we'll witness historical events like the construction of the Thames Tunnel. This adds an extra layer of immersion to the game, and it's clear that the developers did their research to ensure that these elements were accurate and authentic. As much as I did love the world of Assassin's Creed Syndicate, there was one aspect of it that did disappoint me, which was the wide streets. While the game's depiction of Victorian London is incredibly detailed and immersive, the wide streets can make free roaming feel somewhat pointless. When you compare it to the narrow alleyways and rooftop paths of previous games in the series, Syndicate's wide streets can feel empty and lacking in opportunities for parkour or even stealth. While the game's new grappling hook mechanic certainly helps with traversal, it doesn't quite make up for the lack of environmental variety in some areas. To be fair, the wide streets do have their benefits. They allow for more realistic carriage chases and create a sense of scale for the game's larger landmarks, such as Buckingham Palace and St. Paul's Cathedral. And let's not forget the sheer thrill of riding on top of a carriage and dodging obstacles as you try to catch up to your target. Now, these last three settings for me are all a masterpiece, and it was hard to decide which one could be in first, second, or even third. And for this one, it's Assassin's Creed Black Flag, which takes us on a thrilling journey through the Caribbean of the 18th century. The Caribbean setting in Assassin's Creed Black Flag is simply breathtaking, and is one of the reasons why this particular AC entry is one of the most beloved ones in the series, alongside Assassin's Creed 2 and even Origins. One of the things that really stands out about Black Flag's setting is the sheer size of the game's world. 
There are dozens of islands to explore, each with their own unique environment, from lush jungles to rocky cliffsides. The Caribbean Sea itself is also a vast expanse, filled with naval battles, hidden treasures and mysterious locations to discover. The islands that dot the Caribbean Sea in Assassin's Creed Black Flag are just as impressive as the sea itself. The game features a variety of islands, each with its own unique flavour and personality, from the bustling cities of Havana and Kingston, to the lush jungles of Nassau, and even the sandy beaches of the Cayman Sound. There's always something to discover in the game's world. We can explore these islands at our own leisure, taking on missions, finding treasure and even interacting with the game's cast of characters. But perhaps the best part of Black Flag's setting is the way it integrates with the gameplay, especially the naval combat. This part is particularly a highlight of the game. Sailing the high seas, engaging in ship-to-ship -ship battles and even boarding enemy vessels is all seamlessly integrated into the open world experience. The game also includes a number of on-land activities such as treasure hunting and assassination missions, which also adds variety to the gameplay. One thing that I can appreciate of Black Flag's setting is the attention to detail. The developers went to great lengths to recreate the historical setting, from the architecture of the towns and even the designs of the ships. The game also includes a wealth of historical information, such as the various pirate factions and the politics of the time, which adds a layer of authenticity to the experience. A key part of why Black Flag is so great is the way that the sense of history that pervades the game. The game is set during the golden age of piracy, which was a time when the Caribbean was home to some of the most notorious pirates in history. As we explore the game's world, we can encounter historical figures such as Blackbeard, and Bunny and Charles Vane, as well as some fictional characters that just make it feel as authentic. The game's attention to historical detail helps to immerse us in the setting, making us feel like we're actually living in the 18th century Caribbean. Honestly, Assassin's Creed Odyssey setting can be both second and first in this list. It was hard to make a choice between putting this as my favourite or second favourite, but I persevered and decided on second. The Greek setting in Assassin's Creed Odyssey is simply breathtaking, and one of the reasons why this game is one of the more popular ones in the series. From the sprawling cities to the rural villages, every location in Odyssey is rich with history and culture. The vibrant colours of the Greek architecture, the winding streets of Athens and the rocky cliffs of Crete all make for a breathtakingly beautiful world that is an absolute joy to explore. One of the things that I particularly loved about Odyssey's setting was the way that the developers brought ancient Greece to life. The game takes place during the Peloponnesian War and throughout my playthrough I was constantly struck by the sheer scale of the conflict. The battles between Athens and Sparta were particularly epic and Ubisoft did a great job of bringing them to life. As we explore the game's world, we can encounter historical figures such as Socrates, Pericles and Leonidas, as well as many other fictional characters that also just feel as authentic. But what really sets Odyssey apart in my opinion is the attention to detail in world building. The game is full of little details that bring the setting to life, from the way the sunlight filters through the trees, to the sound of the waves crashing against the shore. Whether you're exploring the NPC packed streets of Athens or the sun drenched countryside of the Greek islands, Odyssey's world is a joy to explore, and with so many hidden secrets and ancient artifacts, it did feel like there was always a new adventure just waiting around the corner and all I had to do was explore. Assassin's Creed Odyssey had the attention to detail that rivals games such as Syndicate and Origins, and the vastness that is comparable to Black Flag. Odyssey's setting is nothing short of breathtaking. Each city and region is filled with something new to discover, and the picturesque Greek landscapes never fail to leave me in awe. There are times when I would launch Odyssey just to roam around the stunning world that it has to offer. That's how good it is. And now by far my favourite setting from the entirety of the Assassin's Creed franchise is Origins. The setting of this game is not just my favourite, in fact the actual game itself is my favourite one out of the 12 mainline games. The Ptolemaic Egypt setting in Assassin's Creed Origins is simply awe inspiring and one of the reasons why it's my favourite. As a virtual tourist, it's not impossible to be captivated by the beautifully crafted world that Ubisoft has created. 
From the pyramids to the wildlife, the setting of Assassin's Creed Origins is one of the many reasons I fell in love with this game. I actually made a video on this game not that long ago and talked about why I thought it was a masterpiece of a game. You can check it out if you want. One of the most significant and impressive aspects of the game is the attention to detail. The pyramids, one of the most recognisable structures in the world, are all meticulously crafted in the game. The sheer size of the pyramids is breathtaking and it's easy to see why they were considered one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. Walking through the tombs and solving puzzles to reach the treasure is a thrilling experience. The developers have also incorporated real life historical events into the game, which I'm sure by now you can tell is a common theme of Assassin's Creed, and these historical events make it surprisingly educational and enjoyable. The deserts of Egypt are also beautifully recreated in the game. The vast open spaces and rolling sand dunes are stunning to look at, and the game's weather system adds to the experience. The sandstorms are a sight to behold, and they make traversing the desert even more challenging. The game also includes various oases and towns that are scattered throughout the desert, making the world feel even more alive and bustling with activity. Let me talk about the wildlife in this game. The game's world is full of animals, from crocodiles and hippos in the Nile River to hyenas and jackals in the desert. The animals are not just for show either, hunting is a significant aspect of the game and we can collect materials from animals to upgrade our weapons and equipment. It adds a level of realism to the game and makes it feel like a living, breathing world. One of the most significant changes from previous Assassin's Creed games is the addition of a full day-night cycle. The day-night cycle makes the game more immersive and it affects the gameplay in several ways. For example, enemies are more alert at night, making stealth more difficult. On the other hand, some missions can only be completed at night, adding to the game's variety. Assassin's Creed Origins story is also compelling and the setting plays a significant role in it. The story takes place during the Ptolemaic period where it will take on the role of Bayek who is a Magi, a protector of the people. The game's historical accuracy and attention to detail make it feel like you're living in ancient Egypt. It's not just a game, it's an interactive history lesson that just happens to be enjoyable. And that wraps up my rankings of the 12 best Assassin's Creed settings. We had places like Renaissance Italy, to the Victorian London and even ancient Egypt. I've explored some of the most iconic periods in history through the eyes of our favourite assassins. But now I want to hear from you. What's your favourite Assassin's Creed setting and why? I'm actually pretty intrigued to see the differences in opinions on this topic. In fact I even seen a reddit thread on this topic of video and a lot of people's answers were completely different to what I came up with. Anyway with that said be sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.